I'm continuing to model for the uh, Leonard Challenge 8 old train station and what I'm going to do is finally get to modeling a wood stove and this is something that I modeled this afternoon uh, that's based on a model by Turbo Squid all right they have a number of artists you know contributing models and uh, after researching wood stoves this is the one that I actually like the best this 3d thing so mine is not exactly the same it's kind of similar so I thought we'd give this one a try um, I'll provide this image on the zero bio discord uh, as a reference if you want to model along with me if by the time you view this uh, that's gone I suppose you could take a screenshot of this and you know and try to use it that's the best I can do right now to provide the uh, the image uh, for you okay so I've got a front view a side view and a you know perspective view sort of in a top view just to you know make it a little bit easier for us to to do this a little bit quicker okay so over here in blender I've loaded my background image I've made it so that I can't select it by clicking here turning on the arrow here and then turning off the arrow so I can't select it by accident and I'm gonna go ahead and start modeling this thing all right and it won't look exactly the same this is just to help us so I'm gonna bring in a cylinder and I think I'll go for 24 vertices. I'm gonna go into edit mode and wireframe and scale this down until it pretty much fits uh, the diagram here. I'm going to select this bottom edge here and pull it up to just under, just under here and we'll scale it again a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale that in like that. Click once to add an edge loop and control B to bevel. Actually, we're going to scale this out first. Let's scale it out until it hits the sides and then control B bevel. And let's roll it up nicely like this and then throw in a number of edge loops. Just like this. We'll be using all this section here. To create the panel so okay so now let's shift alt and click there and let's press e to extrude and come down a little bit e to extrude will come out and we'll pull it down and scale and of course we're going to want this to go underneath here so once i've done that i'm going to press e to extrude and i'm going to come down little ways like this let's just go back up here and we're going to come up and scale in a bit and that's going to be okay I think so back in the solid view let's have a look at that I'm going to remove these end gongs here select them in face selection and faces and get rid of those press one to go back in the front view and wireframes have a look Okay, everything looks okay. So I'm going to take this now and shift D, rotate X 180, and I'm going to pull this down to here to make the bottom part. All right, so we've got that, and everything looks relatively good. Okay, so let's go back to the solid. So this is all one object, so that's great. So um, I think I'll join this so it edge selection shift alt and click there and there control e bridge edge loops this will come up and i'm not going to turn on merge am i well maybe i will all right <laughs> fair enough so we've got this funny shaped object right here now off of the bottom and this is why i provided this you see there's a little disc like structure so i'm going to go back into edit mode and shift alt and click there we're just going to do this by eye and feel free to shut off the empty once in a while all right so we're just going to do this by eye not based on the diagram e and s and come out a little ways like that e and come down and we can leave it at that for now and i'll turn that empty back on the empty of course is my image up at the top we see this structure 
Um, so I want to, I don't want to close this off, but I want to bring it in a little bit like this. Because we're going to put on a subdivision surface, and I'll do that right now. With it selected, I'm going to go Control 2 and right click and shade smooth. Right. Any other edge loops we need to add in, we will do that in a moment. Okay, we're going to create this section here. So I'm going to go back into um, edit mode and I'm going to use a circle that we already have here to build this. So I'm going to shift alt and click this upper ring right there. Shift D to duplicate it and just pull it up out of the way. Press P to break it out and select it. I'm going to set the origin of geometry on this. Press 1 to go back into front view. I'm going to pull this down. It's really going to cover up here, so I'm going to go into edit mode. I'll scale it out a little bit and position it better later. So let's just go ahead and create this, pull up, and scale out a bit. I think I'll go into wireframe. He will come in here and we'll scale it in a bit. Come into around the middle, we'll scale it in. Maybe actually we'll do this in two parts. Scale to there. Just keep going and scaling where you need to. I'm going to shut off the subdivision because this makes it a little bit easier to see. I'll just hide it for now. I'm going to come out and scale to there. I'm going to come up again to here. Scale out. And then we'll start making the, the platform part just by coming up like this. Now we're going to close this. Let's go into Y into solid view. E and S. I'll come in. And I think I'll go E and M merge at center. And I'll turn back on the subdivision surface. So we'll see this. I want to close the bottom off or at least pinch it in. E and S. Come in like that. And then let's bring an edge loop down here. Let's shade smooth. And let's hide the image again. And let's make this a little bit more of a nice, nicer platform. Like that. Don't forget to save periodically. So we have this so far. I'm going to make these little circles here that go around. And so the way I'm going to do that is using a plane with a hole in it. And I find that works the best for this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select this pretty central line there. Bring my 3D cursor there. And I'm going to shift A mesh plane. I'm going to bring in a plane. And I think I will hide everything else. Including the empty. And look down on this plane. I'm going to scale this down pretty small. And come in here. Put an edge loop there and there, right in the middle. I know it's a little hard to see. I'm going to bring another edge loop there and there. Select them and scale these in the Y so I have an outer border there. I'm going to put another edge loop there and there. Scale these in the X so that it sort of matches the width. Now I have these four faces in the middle that I can select. Press I to inset and pull that in. I to inset again and loop tools circle. Scale it down so that it fits inside. I'm going to inset one more time. X faces. So I've got that. Now if I put on control 2 subdivision surface I get this nice hole here. At this point, I'm going to press Array and come down to Merge. I'm going to put the Array, I'm going to drag it up on top of the subdivision. And I'm going to put in something like 15 for the time being. Okay, now I'm going to bring back my main body here. I'm going to wrap this around my main body. I just want to have a look at this. I might scale it a bit smaller. Let's have a look at the empty. Okay, from the top view, you see these, 
these holes here. I may not end up with the same number. I want to kind of get the, as I scale this in, I'm just looking at the holes. I may not get the same size or the same number. Uh, well, we'll have to just see how it goes. Okay. To wrap it around, I'm going to use a curve. And I'm going to take the curve from here. This uh, edge right here, I'm going to shift D and S to scale it out so I can move it away from the main body. P to break it out. And I've got that. I'm going to take this with the subdivision on and I'm going to convert it to a curve. It's a nice smooth curve. I'm going to select my plane now. I've got the array on. I've got subdivision on. I'm going to add modifier to curve. And with the eyedropper, I'm going to select that curve. And we have this going around. I'm going to come to my array and I'm going to keep adding segments until it almost closes. Now, you can either S to scale and pull it in now, or you can add, you can pull it back and add another segment. Either one. S. Now, I don't know if you want 19 holes. Maybe we want 20 holes. Maybe for some reason we need an even number. S. Pull it in like this. Now I'm going to zoom in closer, press S, hold the shift to move slower, pull or push until it's just about touching. Now let's make sure in the array that you have merge turned on. All right. Once it's pretty close, we're going to apply the array. We're going to apply the curve, not the subdivision though. I'm going to go in to edit mode now. And I'm going to, in edge selection, shift alt and click this edge, shift alt and click this edge, and go control E, bridge edge loops, and turn on merge. You get one edge there, similar to all the rest. So we've got this. Now I'm going to have to scale it out just a little bit so that the circles are under the body. And I may have to scale it out some more. So we'll do that I can select the curve and delete it I don't need it anymore come in here I'm gonna look from the front let's turn back on the image and let's move this up looks like I can scale it out a bit more E to extrude come on down and we have this we may have to position it a little bit better but cool all right. While we're here, let's do these little pieces here. And, uh, get some more, blow some more polys. So I'm going to come into the main body. In fact, I should just focus on that slash key. And I'm going to take, let's see. I'm actually going to let's let's just let's just shift holding the shift and select that piece right there. Okay, let's look from the side. Hopefully, it's a so it's pretty much at the front. It's easier that way. Shift D to duplicate it, pull it out, P to break it out, and select it. I've got that. All right, let's go into edit mode. E to extrude, pull it out just a little ways like this. All right. I'm going to throw down an edge loop near the top and down near the bottom just to straighten it out a bit. That's the way I like it. And then uh, E, and I'm going to press Alt S. And I'm going to. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pull it back. X faces. And we have this. Okay, let's go in M and Alt N. Recalculate outside in case anything funny happened along the way. So the back is clear. All right, I'm gonna pull that back in so it starts to go in. So I'm gonna come back into this object here and focus just on it. 
and I'm putting it back on this temporarily. And it looks a little weird for the moment. And that's all right, though. Let's focus just on those two things. I'm going to look down from the top and select my object. I'm going to edit mode, save, and I'm going to spin. 360. I think I will go for... Um, I don't know. Let's try 24. You know, you don't want to go. I don't want to go too crazy. Maybe 28. Okay. And I have now spun that around. Kind of similar to that. I'm going to try scaling this in the Z and seeing how well it grips there we go I got a little bit of space there I'm gonna focus just on that and I want to delete this back face select similar polygon what was it select similar polygon faces worked for me okay let's come back let's hide this empty and let's save let's shift d rotate x 180 and pull this down until it until we like where it fits all right doing well Okay, let's do this uh, top part here. I'm going to borrow a circle again. Shift D. P to break it out. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to look from the top. And we can look over at the uh, empty, which you won't be able to see that way. But I can load it again. But I'm doing this part here. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than this circle there. So that's all I need to know. I'm just thinking, okay, I want to make two circles in there. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's extrude. Let's pull that almost all the way in. And let's eat um, at center. Throw in a few edge loops, something like that. I, mean, I got four in there and B to bevel pull it out make sure I roll my mouse back to zero and uh, we're gonna go E extrude down and I'll just take this and extrude that down as well bring an edge loop up shade smooth and we'll do something like that and pull it down to the surface I don't know what that is. A little burner of some sort. Let's look from the front. And yeah, that's it there. Okay. Something you can do whatever design you like on there. Um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make that little handle thing. And I think I'll borrow this vertex. Just choose a vertex that's maybe not right at the end. And it's kind of central. This makes it easier. Shift D to duplicate it, pull it up out of the way, P to break it out, back into object mode, and then select that. Go into edit mode, I can move it back down. I can move it wherever I want to look from the top. It wasn't that central, I'm actually going to move it to about there. Okay, I'll push it down. E to extrude, come on up. And I'm going to look from some side view. E and just pull it out. Now I've got a subdivision surface on there. I'm going to turn it off for now. Okay. Now I'm going to take this point and shift control B to bevel. And I break it apart like that and throw in a few edge loops. A few vertices is what I meant to say. And I've got that. And I'm going to convert this to a curve. And in the curves, I'm going to come down to geometry, bevel, and I'm going to hold down shift and pull and give it a bit of thickness. Shade smooth. 
width or whatever you want to call that. I'll set the origin of geometry on that guy and pull him down. So I'm going to have a handle here. And once I like that, the size, let's say, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger just so you can see it. I'm going to come up to the top here and change the resolution. And I'm going to convert this back, select it, convert it back to a mesh. Like that. I'm going to grab this edge here. If I can, there we go. And I'm going to press E and S and come out and see if I can do normal E. And no, not really. None of these will work. So I'm just going to go to the side and I'm just going to come out. That's fine. E and S come in, E and merge at center. And then I will, um, actually going to press S and scale that give myself a bit more room so I can grab these edges and just bevel and just have like one segment in there I think I'll do something at the bottom as well so I'm going to lift it up and go E and S out just a little bit this will never be visible at all but just for the heck of it control one we could try that and as it turns out I don't want that many edge loops so I'm going to come back in here and grab Let's see which ones. Those two at least, and dissolve edges. And if I get rid of that one, let's get this big blob, eh? and that's what I'm gonna pull that out. It won't make it so sharp. So let's get rid of uh, this one. And I can even get rid of another one. Let's see if I get rid of that one. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Maybe bring an edge loop down here. Safe. And that's my little handle. Now, I don't know whether you want it at the front or at the side. Um, I'm going to take a piece of this, as I usually do. Shift D. And pull it back and make it a bit smaller. This is where the pipe will come out. Okay. So let's look. Let's come up. Oh, I'm not in. Where am I? Oh, I'm in behind. That's why. All right, let's go into wide frame. Okay, let's go. I'll grab. Uh, I don't know if I separated that out or not. There it is. Move my diagram back to there. We go. Let's scale shift Z, make it a bit wider. Pull this down so I've got that. Okay, there we go. E and S and come in. Now you can, it's better if you do it in vertex, you can see the outermost vertex right there so you can get the, the width of the thing that you're trying to model i'm just going to bring that up and we'll build a pipe off that uh, at a later date okay i'm going to bring an edge loop down here yeah all right the whole thing needs to come down so it makes contact and that being the case we'll come back into here and i will box select Let's say, yeah, that's fine. And then move this up. Okay. And put an edge loop. Let's see how tight I made that. And that's okay. Shade smooth. All right. Let's take the empty here, make it selectable. Pull it back behind. There we go. That's okay for now. Okay, let's bring in a plane now. Go into edit mode. One, let's scale this to match the stand here. 
roughly e to extrude and come down and we'll scale it out like this e and s come out a bit e come down e and s come out come down and scale it out just like that Let's select this face, press I to inset, come in a little ways, E to extrude and come down a bit until the base is revealed. I don't want it too far. Let's put a bevel on to three segments maybe. 0 0.02, let's say. And then I'm gonna select these outer edges here. We can still look at the diagram in wireframe. Control B to bevel and pull until it sort of matches matches the diagram here. Shade smooth. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the bottom face, however. I think I'll make a bit of a lip underneath like that. All right, so we got that. Looking from the front, I'm gonna bring in a, well, some like three cursor there. Then bring in a circle. I'll make it 16 vertices, that's fine. Let's scale it down and position it roughly. Let's E extrude. I'm going to just pull it down. Let's scale. And do this in wireframe. Let's just make it roughly match the diagram. Okay. So look from the bottom and position it. Look from the front. Shade smooth that. Just pull it up. Okay, now this one is facing that way. Let's hide the empty. Is it okay? Side. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, just pull it like this. And from the front. something like something like that okay I'm gonna select this and set the origin of geometry and bring my 3d cursor there and then I'll take this little up from the bottom and did I do that? I hope I pulled that right and let's just wait move that there and then I'm gonna mirror this let's set the origin of the 3d cursor though Okay, because I'll never see that close. Let's have a look at some of this. I'm gonna to have to flip some stuff. So anything that is red, I'm going to edit mode and I'm flipping. Those and those. All dead, we calculate the outside. All of this stuff. We've gone on pretty long so far, so I think we should leave it for now. We only have a few more pieces to do. This is how our stove is looking, and I think it looks great. We'll continue in part two, and we'll finish up with the stuff that we gotta do there, and the panel on the front, and that'll be it. Thanks for watching.